course, because I'm an orchestra conductor, I will have a music stand. <laughs> I decided to open our time together tonight with a four-letter word. Gift. Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> there are two kinds of gifts, obviously. The tangible kind, the kind we wrap in paper and ribbon. A person gives to another person on an occasion, or if you're lucky, maybe not on an occasion. And then there's the intangible gift, one that comes from an unseen energy, who knows where, that's very deeply felt. Intangible gifts like love, faith, admiration, trust, connection, or the intangible gift of a soulmate. The focus tonight of our time together is going to deal with an intangible gift. And that gift is a five-letter word, music. More specifically, art music, and even more specifically, live music. Music that should be supported from the highest level of national government to the smallest elementary school in the most rural areas of our country. I'm always asked being a performing musician, with people craving inspiration like they have for so long in this incredible age of technology, Facebook and Twitter and Skype, iTunes and YouTube, these incredible media that bring anything to us, is there even time or a need anymore for live music? Why pay for a ticket and sit in a room when all you have to do is press a button? Well, my opinion is that music exists in thousands of ways, in thousands of guises. But we're going to talk about two. As technology becomes more advanced and sophisticated and things become easier to access, sometimes the world has a tendency to become a kind of a group of parallel universes. Earpods, iPods, text messaging. You can go around any college campus or high school hallway and 60 to 70 percent of the people you see will be having intense personal experiences with something really valuable, but alone. <laughs> I called up a, a YouTube video and I apologize if the woman is watching or will watch this. You don't know who I am and I don't know who you are. We'll keep it that way. <laughs> of, um, I think it's entitled, Woman Falls into Fountain While Texting in the Mall. <laughs> she literally is concentrating so hard on her text message, she takes a header into the fountain and gets out of it so quickly, thinking nobody has seen it. Unfortunately, the security camera did it now. Everyone has seen it. But that type of thing is just kind of on the, on the extreme. That video and, and music making that br is brought to us virally is super entertaining and educational. But it's temporary in a way. Certainly it's capable of changing our mood, um, but it's almost as if it's a temporary high. It's a special solitary experience that we all have, which is valuable, I love it, which needs to be repeated and repeated to come back. It doesn't grow within us. It doesn't plant a seed necessarily. It nourishes us, but it might not plant a seed. I own a lot of recordings, and I love YouTube. I, I have videos. I still have VHS tapes that I had for a long time that I just adore. And I, I crank them loudly and constantly. But I found myself that the more that I participate in watching, the more I crave making music live, and having the experience of doing it with another person. On the other hand, there is the inspiration derived from live music. What's the difference? Well, live music has to be shared, shared with someone else, in real time, spontaneously. Then and there, it's like an, an energy that emits its own light because the audience and the performer are participating together. For me, being an orchestral conductor, one of the most thrilling moments is the time right before a concert starts. The lights dim, the stage lights go up, and the audience is silent. Well, most of the time. And suddenly, the performer comes out, and the conductor raises his baton, and boom, you're on your way. And suddenly, there's an energy in the room. There's, it's like an orb 
that, that gyrates above the audience of the performer, and the performers put their energy into it, the audience put their energy into it, and it just grows and grows and grows, and suddenly the room has changed. And because the room has changed, we are changed. In the simplest of forms, there's a story that I bring that touched me very deeply about this intangible gift. About 12 years ago, at Christmas time, some members of my orchestra and I were asked to entertain at a very special place, a place which takes families who have fallen on hard luck, who are homeless, perhaps unemployed, and gives them a place to stay, feeds them and rehabilitates them, do whatever's necessary to get them back to where they need to be in real life. Christmas is a really busy time for performing musicians, so this was just another gig. We went in, we packed up our stuff, started setting up, and people were milling in, and there was a couple that came in the back door that I was particular, just caught my eye. It was a mother, a young mother, probably early 20s, had a little two-year-old boy holding his hand. He was freshly scrubbed from the bathtub. You could tell because his hair was plastered to his head and it was just newly done. Brand new khaki pants, brand new white tennis shoes, a white shirt with the line still on it from the packaging and a Christmas vest and a man's bow tie that was way too big for him. <laughs> And they came and sat in the front row, and I thought, oh, that's, that's nice, cute kid, cute kid. I wasn't needed in the first half of the concert, so I went to the side and was watching. And I noticed that during these simple Christmas carols by this orchestra and these group of singers, the little boy kept on getting out of his chair and reaching for the cello player, who's about six feet away. And his mother would go, no, shockingly, and put his hand back and said, no, no, sit down. And he was just looking with this look of awe, and he, he smiled, and he reached for the cello players, and went, no, no, listen, listen. And he was, I, I went right to his face, and he had a look of awe and wonder, enchantment. And the only thing I could think of at that time being the holidays was it looked like a Christmas card with an angel staring at a star. It was the most beautiful, the most touching thing to watch someone see something that magical, so innocently. The second half of the concert came and I had to do my job. So as you know, conductors spend 98% of their time with their backs to the audience. So I conducted and as I turned around to acknowledge the crowd, I noticed the mother was sobbing. And I thought, my God, we couldn't have been that bad. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I wonder what happened. But the little boy was still enraptured and he started getting eyes on the violins and on the French horn. After it was all over, we were packing up our stuff, and the woman approached me with the little boy. And in very broken English, looked me straight in the eyes and said, thank you. And I said, oh, you're very welcome. She goes, no, grab my arm. Thank you. That was the first Christmas gift my son has ever received. So indeed, that experience was shared immediately. The intangible gift took over, and our little guy and that orchestra brought their energy into the mix. And our souls were all nurtured. I know mine was. I left there a changed person. Through the ability of human beings to share and communicate on the deepest level, which to me is the musical level, transcended language, transcended the fact that I had never seen them before and have never seen them since. I still carry that little boy in my heart. At that point in our lives, ladies and gentlemen, words become very unnecessary. That's why they call music the universal language. All emotion is understood and cherished and appreciated collectively as one between us all, even if we don't know each other. The intangible gift from who knows where changes us, and that change is permanent, quite the opposite of the temporary kind. Like dividends in a bank, where you keep adding in and hopefully it'll grow and grow and grow. And all those parallel universes become one entity together. We want to get on stage and participate. Performers want to get out to the audience and listen. The human need to share and communicate is realized. So live music, that five-letter word, can be defined by another five-letter word. 
where music can be entertaining, can fill our time with joy, can even inspire us, live music has power. A powerful agent that touches us deep within ourselves, changes us within, and bonds us outside, without. Through the process of interacting with each other, we are reminded how intimately connected we are as human beings. Live music has the power to remind us of that intangible gift. And that's why it should be cheerfully and unabashedly supported. You want to hear about what happened to my little guy? Well, I have it on very good authority that the little guy isn't so little anymore. <laughs> With a lot of luck and a lot of love and a lot of help, the mother received some training and got a very comfortable job. They were able to secure a home near family in another state. And now the little guy who isn't so little anymore carries two things to school, a backpack full of books and a cello because he's playing in a school orchestra. It's hard to realize, but I'd like to give him a message. To get to Carnegie Hall, you have to practice, practice, <laughs> practice. <laughs> a simple Christmas carol, a cello and a chance meeting to a young man who had never had a Christmas gift. Turned out to be probably the most power and most beautiful gift of all. He now has a musical path to true self-expression and a doorway to a musical life of a lifetime. A real, special, intangible gift, the permanent kind. After teaching for so long and conducting for so long, I found one thing to be very true. I have the most incredible students on the planet, and they are technically incredible. They take advantage of technology in a very meaningful way. As they become more and more technically proficient and their worlds become faster and faster and faster at warp speed, they crave human contact and self-expression exponentially more. Their need for their inner souls to be heard, understood, respected, and cared about and safe becomes more important and even crucial. That is the ultimate gift of music, which will never die. As long as the human spirit is alive, live music will be too. That permanent fire of inspiration in us, every day as part of our inner soul, is meant to be shared and celebrated, not now, but in generations to come. The young man is going to join me on stage right now. And he is my graduate orchestral assistant at the University of South Florida, a member of the USF Symphony Orchestra, Mr. Oliver Weston. And he and I, before we take our leave, would like to leave you with our own intangible gift to you, a small moment of some of those things that, which we've been talking about. And I find it fascinating that something like music that has existed for hundreds of years and has always been on the edge of the future will continue to be on the edge of the future for hundreds of years to come. That is possibly the greatest gift of all. And the world has never needed it more. Thank you.